my hime is you know it's it, it's good you know my brother once told me that nothing someone says before the word but really counts My Hime is a 13-episode 2004 show from Sunrise that was stretched into 26 episodes. At least, that's what it felt like watching it. This show's got a somewhat convoluted setup for what's ultimately a pretty straightforward action romp. Some mysterious organization gathers together a bunch of girls with powers at some school at first to fight some monsters, and then actually to fight each other for some ancient ritual that's part of some scheme by some ancient asshole. All of these superpowered girls are referred to as Hime, and the main character is named Mai. Thus, Mai Hime. Hey, that's the name of the show. So these Hime are the primary draw, right? We're here for girls doing magic action fighting nonsense, and when the show is doing that, it's great. The action can get very intense thanks to a combination of fluid animation and unique set pieces and character gimmicks. Honestly, this could just work as an animation showcase. All the well-choreographed action really makes it surprising that this was a TV anime from 2004. Like, I don't remember Full Metal Alchemist's action looking that good, but maybe it did. I really should rewatch that show. Anyway, the action scenes were also great because of all the crazy, unpredictable shit that happens in them. Like, maybe someone's getting spiderwebbed or getting blasted by a laser shot from a giant mech crow or even uh, riding a frog. My favorite image from all this action, though, is probably the simplest. Just Mikoto and her sword. Something about her dragging that thing across the ground with such speed and force that sparks fly, and then waving it around is just beautiful. The show's action is only bolstered by its excellent character designs, which are just simple enough to lend themselves well to both chaotic fight scenes and otherwise expressive actions. The character animation is not limited to fights, no. These characters are constantly moving both in and out of fights, constantly flipping between a variety of facial expressions and poses, making even the relatively calm scenes fun to behold. Overall, when the show's doing action, whether it be fights or character animation, it's doing good. Alas, not all of the show is action, indeed. Most of the first half isn't, and that is unfortunate. My Hime's first half is kind of boring. The majority of the action good times are saved for the latter half, leaving the opening 13 sparse on that front, which is really problematic given that the action is the appeal. Not just the appeal, but like, the one thing the show does really well. I'm not saying the show doesn't have appeal outside of its action, but it's dangerously close to being the case. The show's first half acts as an overlong buildup that only serves to set up the main conflict and characters that will be put at the forefront of the second half. Conceptually, that in and of itself is fine, but in execution, the show kind of falters. While all the characters are introduced, the show rarely delves into them in any meaningful way beyond surface-level interactions. Instead of spending time with each character to flesh them out so that we can care about them by the time the action rolls around, the show pushes all that good juicy stuff aside and just gives us speedy introductions and maybe a few brief glimpses of their personalities so that it can squeeze in a few more air quotes jokes about, uh, someone grabbing Mai's chest. Or how about the wind blowing up Natsuki's skirt when she's not wearing any underwear? Comedy? You know, Natsuki gets repeatedly sexually humiliated throughout the show, and that's, like, kind of off-putting. Like, I have my tolerance for anime bullshit. I, I wouldn't be this deep in the medium if I didn't, but... Even I was like, this, this this is not necessary at all. And then there's this one bit later on, oh, God, we'll get to that. Don't get me wrong, the first half of the show isn't completely without excitement. There are rare, non-boring moments, like in episode 3 where they just blow up a whole mountain. Now that's a lot of damage! And there is the occasional good character beat. I like how Nao is teased an episode before we find out what's going on with her, and her roping in Mikoto to her whole seduce and beat up and rob pervs thing primes us to understand how Mikoto, though generally well-meaning, is naive and easily manipulated, which becomes very important toward the end, 
Though that facet is muddied somewhat by magic brainwashing, but whatever, I'll take what I can get. Aside from those rare good character moments or action beats, though, most of the first 13 episodes are filled with comedy bits that don't land, or scenes where characters that we haven't been given a chance to care about much yet just sort of hanging around and not doing much. As a result, far too much of the first half is just dull. Really, sticking with it this long is just making me question my sanity. Like, there's no way this is going to get any better. <laughs> Oh. So yeah, right at the end of episode 13, that happens, and pretty much everything just increases. The pace quickens, the action gets more frequent and more intense, the stakes shoot through the roof, and all the characters deal with some huge emotional conflicts that challenge their core selves. The emotional thrust of every Hime story is their relationship with the person they care most about. At the heart of my Hime is not quite a message per se, but more an emotional appeal that there's beauty in fighting to save those you love. To communicate this, the show spends time with each Hime exploring various types of relationships, from a lovey-dovey couple to fondness that slowly blooms to some rather unhealthy stuff. These relationships can be beautiful and warm, and are meant to be, more than anything else in the world, worth fighting for. So then, just to amplify all of that, murder happens. When Ahime loses, she doesn't die. Rather, the one she loves the most does. And to make it all even better, it turns out in the latter half that this is all some sort of Fate Stay Night Battle Royale, where the last Hime standing wins. When that's revealed, it becomes clear that most of the supporting cast is fucked. And yet, once those deaths start rolling in, they caught me by surprise. On top of the action, the latter half of my Hime is characterized by its surprisingly emotionally resonant character moments, from quiet relationship building to horrible gut-wrenching death. Akira's relationship with Takumi, for instance, was rather heartwarming. She starts out cold and distant, but through Takumi's unrelenting cheerfulness, his ability to power through his own shit life circumstances, Akira gradually comes to respect and admire him. Akira's all about opening up, leaving your comfort zone, and daring to try something you never thought possible. Her relationship with Takumi helped her grow into a better person, and watching that growth play out in and of itself was rewarding. So of course, when she loses and Takumi fucking dies, it's like, oof. There's also lots of little character moments that stick out in my mind. Like with Nao, throughout the show she's mostly this chaotic force with a penchant for violence and antagonism, but just before her defeat rolls around we finally get just enough insight into her to understand what her mother means to her, and then she loses and just sits there and screams, screams for her mother. And as she's crying out for her mother, crying out for someone who she can't see and now will never see, you can't help but realize that, despite all the horrible things she's done and been through, like any of us, she just wanted to be loved, and now she can't. So overall, these relationships comprise the emotional core of my Hime, and while most of them are compelling or believable to one degree or another, Unfortunately, uh, no, I can't, I just, there's no transition into this, is there? Just, fair warning, this next bit's going to get uncomfortable. The relationship between Natsuki and Shizuka is, shall we say, a wee bit poorly executed. Now before I say anything else, let me say that I don't necessarily believe that there are any topics that can't be explored within fiction. There are definitely some topics that aren't a good idea to explore, unless the author has a damn good idea what they're talking about and can approach those topics with sensitivity. Uh, but regardless, everything's fair game. But as the topics a work broach become increasingly sensitive, it becomes harder to accurately or at least fairly and believably portray them. My Hime broaches the topic of sexual assault with the relationship between Natsuki and Shizuka, and the... It, it doesn't do a very good job. In the latter half of my Hime, it's revealed that Shizuka has a rather one-sided affection for Natsuki. During the whole dramatic reveal, we are shown this. And this 
heavily implies that Shizuka sexually assaulted Natsuki while she was asleep. And as all that was going down, all that was going through my mind was pretty much... No, 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 no. No. Oh my god! Oh my god! No! She had already non-consensually kissed her earlier, and this is just taking it even further. By this point, Shizuka has proven herself to be a fairly reprehensible person. Now let me restate myself, this plot point, character beat, whatever you want to call it, in and of itself, I don't take issue with. I mean, it's fucking gross, sure, but that doesn't mean it shouldn't be there. As long as the fallout from this event is handled with any sort of sensitivity or care, as long as anything that happened afterward at least made any sort of emotional sense, or even as long as the show had some sort of point to communicate about this whole thing, then this would have been fine. None of that happened. At first, Natsuki rightfully freaks the fuck out, but later on it turns out that, oh, Natsuki also liked Shizuka, and then she forgives her, and the series ends with them as at least friends and maybe more? Natsuki forgave her. Natsuki forgave her. Now, for the sake of transparency, I'll admit that I myself do not have personal experience with sexual assault. I am not a victim thereof, nor is anyone I know. As far as I know, I hope not. That is all to say that I cannot personally speak to the emotions behind Natsuki's actions. That does not prevent me from recognizing, however, that this forgiveness is wrong on every level. It was not justified within the narrative, it does not make emotional sense for Natsuki, and it sends kind of a shit message. Whether or not Shizuka could theoretically ever be forgiven is beyond me. Maybe, maybe not, and you can debate that all day. But whatever the end result of that debate is, it's irrelevant because she definitely should not have been here, given how this story was presented. Within the story, the justification for Natsuki's forgiveness is as follows. First, turns out that Natsuki always liked Shizuka. Second, Shizuka apologized and cried. That's it. And it shouldn't be. You can argue to what extent Shizuka actually assaulted Natsuki, but the fact remains that she violated her on just about the deepest personal level she could have. Such a deep violation like that cannot and should not be easily forgiven, let alone rewarded. And yet that's exactly what happens. Natsuki, despite being deeply disturbed by what happened to her at first, seemingly forgets all about it in favor of a happy ending, and that's not okay. Shizuka should not get off scot-free. By forcing this happy ending, the show tacitly implies that Shizuka's actions, while bad, are acceptable so long as the perpetrator says sorry. And that's disgusting. Having not been given good reason to forgive Shizuka, Natsuki should have distanced herself as much as possible or lashed out in anger or really displayed any sign that she was affected beyond the initial freakout. Shizuka's actions should have been condemned, and yet the victim is made out to not care for no good reason. What I'm trying to say is this show grossly oversimplified a serious real-world trauma for the sake of cheap drama. In so doing, it tacitly condoned the abuser's actions and made me throw up my hands and go, fuck this shit. This is fucking gross and I hate it. To be clear, I'm not saying this plotline couldn't theoretically be well executed. In theory, if handled with enough care, the sexual assault could still be a thing as long as its fallout was carefully explored or at least believable. Like if Natsuki cut ties or if Shizuka was punished or I don't know fucking anything other than them getting together at the end. The victim hooking up with her abusers just... God, I need brain bleach. All that aside, there's one last thing I want to discuss, and that's the ending. Up until this point, things have been getting pretty grim. Cast members have been dying left and right, mostly at the height of and conclusions to their emotional arcs. Mai has had the thing she loved the most taken away from her. Now all she can do is fight for what's right and ensure that something like this never happens again. Forced to set aside her own cares, she fights with noble ambitions. This is all set up to be the cool climax to her story, but then... 
through some magic nonsense, literally everyone who died is brought back to life, and all the he may join together to take down the looming threat. How could you do this to me? Part of me wants to say this ending is okay. This was never meant to be a downer show. Indeed, one of the messages of my Hime is that the people you love are the most important things in life. So it's only appropriate that, after all the fighting and hardships, the characters get to be with their loved ones in the end. But the random resurrection kind of completely destroys whatever tension had been built up and reverses a lot of the characters' personal drama, so while I can't say the ending is terrible, much like the thing with Natsuki and Shizuka, it was very poorly considered. But that's it from me about My Hime. It's a good show, but just barely. As an action series, it succeeds. With plenty of thrilling action and wacky character animation, the series always managed to visually impress. The latter half of the series also had a lot of great character beats and emotional stakes. Unfortunately, My Hime is dragged down by a dull first half and some very poorly considered character arcs in its better half. I can't say I would ever recommend this series over a myriad of similar better shows, but hey, if you're really bored one day and really want some cool girl-on-girl -girl action that came out wrong, then watch this series. Otherwise, eh. Hey you, you who stuck around to the end, this was my first viewer's choice video where commenters pick the shows I watch and make videos about. This show was chosen by Mark Soon McNone, I, I hope that's how I pronounce that, and it holds a special place in their heart, so I, I hope I didn't bum you out too much, dude. Also, apparently this show's writer also did Seikon no Quasar- what? Oh, I feel like this explains some things. Anyway, uh, the next viewer's choice is right now. Leave your choice of show in the comments, and the most upvoted comment a week after this video goes live wins. Revisit the end of my Smile Precure video for more details, or actually probably just check the description. Yeah, do that instead. Thank you all for sitting through my rambling about a mid-2000s cartoon. My next video will be on Doki Doki Precure, after which will be the next viewer's choice. Stick around if you're interested. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you then.